Welcome back, you beautiful people. Most of you know how to ride a bike. Some of you have never ridden one before, and you're definitely missing out. Now, you're probably partial to a few Sunday cruises along country lanes, or you're an experienced road cyclist, or even better, you've just bought yourself a brand new shiny bike. The chances are you've seen them, or heard them. Mud splattered faces, shouts of, yeah! And that was sick, brah! The sound of a buzzing beehive buzzing past you as you poodle along the fire track. It's us mountain bikers. That's right, you beautiful people. Today I'm gonna to teach you on how to be a mountain biker, show you the ropes, the skills you need, what you need to wear, where to ride, who to follow, videos to watch, and all that rad jazz and what bike to ride. All coming up in this rad video. Before we even hit the trails, let me talk about the gear that you need to wear before you venture out there and start riding your bike. And I'm gonna start from the ground going up. I'm talking about shoes, shoes that will protect your feet when you're out riding. Now I recommend a good flat pair of shoes, like a skate shoe with a good rubber sole or some trainers. And the pedals that you're gonna be using are flat pedals. They're gonna be safer for you to start to learn how to ride a bike or if you venture off road, it's easy to get your feet off. Maybe in the future you can look at investing in a pair of bespoke mountain bike riding shoes that are gonna protect your feet from all the elements and give you an abundance of grip. Okay, let's move up. Now I'm wearing a pair of knee pads. Now these knee pads are an aggressive knee pad, but it's gonna help protect those contact points if I was to ever have a crash. Now there's a number of different companies out there in the world that you can choose from for knee pads. I recommend having a pair of knee pads just in case you do have a crash out there on the trail. Now. Clothing wise, shorts or trousers. Now I can say you can ride in jeans. It's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable when you go out on longer journeys where you need the flexibility. You need your legs to breathe, especially if it's a hot day. I'm wearing some shorts right here. These are GMBN shorts. These are our shorts. They are mountain biking shorts. They are quite lightweight. They're breathable and they've got a lot of flex in them and it's gonna keep me comfortable when riding. Now both beneath those, I've got a pair of bib shorts. Now, this is not for everyone. What bib shorts are is a padded short that protects you from saddle. When you're on the saddle for a long time, it will protect those contact points on your bum between you and the saddle. Right, moving up to the torso. Now I'm wearing a long sleeve technical t-shirt. It's quick drying, it's lightweight, it's breathable. Uh, it's long sleeve, so it's gonna protect me if I were to crash on the trail. Now you can wear a t-shirt, and if it gets a little bit chilly out there, you can wear a sweater, a lightweight jacket, or a hoodie. Now with the hoodie, I've, from experience, I've crashed from hoodies because you've got that big pocket in the front, your handlebars can get snagged up in there and it can throw you off. So you don't wanna be wearing something too baggy and bulky on your upper body. Now we do do some jerseys that are pretty cool that can are bespoke for mountain biking, breathable and all technical and all that rad jazz. But the last thing in the list is a helmet. I recommend that you don't even leave your house, your front door, even the car park where you've parked to go for a ride without one of these on your head. So there you go, that's what to wear. Now, where to ride? Where to ride? Now, a trail center has something for everyone. There's an abundance of trails to choose from and they're all color graded. Yes, yeah, starting with the first one, a green trail. Now this is gonna be very mellow, super easy. You're not gonna to have to have all the skills in the world to ride a green trail. And there's not gonna be much undulations either. Now the next one is a blue trail. Now the blue trail is gonna have some rollers. It's gonna have a few more challenging obstacles in the trail that you're gonna need a little bit more skill to ride. Now the next one would be a red. Now this one would be more of an you know, an intermediate to expert kind of trail. There's gonna be some very challenging stuff on this trail. You're gonna need a lot more skills to ride a red than you would a blue. Now the next one on the list, well, it's more of an expert trail and it's gonna be very extreme and challenging. And that is a black trail. It's gonna be extreme. There's gonna be jumps with gaps. There's gonna be drops with gaps. You're gonna be going a little bit faster or a lot faster than the red or the blue and extremely a lot more faster than the green. So you're gonna have to be 
very skilled rider to ride a black. You're gonna need a few skills to ride a mountain bike down a trail. Now we've done a plethora of how-to videos dedicated to skills that you need to ride a mountain bike. I've linked a few in the description down below so you can binge watch to your heart's content. But the skills that you're gonna need to require to ride down a trail are climbing, descending, hopping, jumping, cornering, pedaling, and last but least, shredding. Now, if you don't know what shredding means, it means you just have fun on your bike and go have a gas with your friends out on the trail. Bike parks, one of my favorite places to ride. Now, this is for the more advanced rider. Compared to a trail center where it's uh, more pedally, a bike park is fed by gravity. There's gonna be a lot more things out there that are gonna catch you up, like jumps, for instance, and drops. Just like those two fellas riding down the trail. Much like a trail center, bike parks use color graded trails as well. You can see green, blue, red, and black down the bottom. Now, here at Rogate Bike Park, they use the traffic light system, where everything's extreme, but they use dots in between to show you how extreme that trail is. For example, S&M Trail over here is a triple red dot, which means it's a black. There's gonna be gap jumps in there that you're gonna have to clear, and there's gonna be some big jumps that are gonna be higher consequences if you don't make the jump. But what if you don't have a bike park near you and the trail center's miles away and you don't wanna drive and your local bike shop doesn't even cater for weekly rides? Never fear, we live in the digital era where there's apps for apps and there's apps specifically for mountain biking or trail finding. Now us dudes at GMBN, we love using Komoot to find trails in our local area. But there's a number of other apps out there like Strava, Trail Forks, Viewfinder, Wikiloc, all of them. They will help you find where you need to ride. So use your app to find trails. Check out the highlighted areas within the map, segments and the heat maps as well, just to see where all the traffic is going, where all the people are most likely to be riding, because chances are, they're gonna be pretty good. Okay, now you're becoming a real mountain biker, okay? And you want to push it to the next level. It's time to watch videos. And I'm not just saying YouTube, because there's more than just watching POV vlogs out there. There's a lot more than that. I'm thinking feature films, video segments, race recaps from the World Cup, even Instagram bangers from athletes. Talk about athletes, follow the athletes on social media. Get inspiration from them to pursue your mountain biking passion. Last but not least, go on holiday with your mountain bike. Now there's going on holiday, and then there's going on holiday. But going on holiday is like exploring what your country has to offer. Be it if you're gonna go to a bike park for the weekend, a trail center, or some trails that you've been recommended by some friends. Just going on a holiday, exploring new land on your bike with your mates is good. But going on holiday is another different story. That's putting your bike in a box, chucking it on an airplane, and going further afield. Another country like Whistler, yeah going to Whistler. That's a beautiful place. It's a massive bike park. You can have fun. It's different. It caters for everything. But there's other places everywhere else in the whole world, like the Alps in Europe. Or if you don't go to Europe, maybe you're from Australia. You go to New Zealand. Anyway, going on holiday with your mountain bike is going to make you actually a better biker and you're going to experience mountain biking to its full potential. Okay, now you're getting super serious into mountain biking. And you're thinking, one bike's not enough. I need another one. Ha! You can never have too many bikes because there's so many out there to choose from. Do you want an XC bike, trail bike, gravel bike, downhill bike, jump bike, e-bike, fat bike? It's endless. There's so many out there. I did leave one out. Road bike, but you don't need it. Because we're mountain bikers. There is so many bikes to choose from and you can't have enough to go out there to experience different types of terrain to ride. Look at that. You can't have enough bikes. I say maybe two bikes. So there's a few tips on how to become a mountain biker. Hopefully this video has fueled that passion to become more of a biker. Because I, I, I just love it so much. Let us know in the comments down below if you love it as much as I do. Yay! See ya!